Ladies and gentlemen, Neblim and I are here to cast the last of the lower qualification matches for Gauntlet B. This is the final series that decided our final player to enter into Battlements. And you might know who that player is, but we're gonna pretend like you don't and keep it in suspense here. We've got Moon Hunter versus Top Ramen, Terran versus Terran. Neblime, how excited are you to see TVT? I actually am really excited. I'm not even joking. I love TVT and Brood War. I really wanna see what it's all about. In CMBW, I sort of screwed myself over by going Zerg. I'm not going to be able to play any of them, but my time will come soon enough. And I think it's going to be a very exciting matchup once we fully explore it. That's right. Yeah, I think so, too. And I feel like, I mean, we can talk a little bit about mirrors maybe uh, at some other point, too. I feel like, uh, you know, the ZVZ mirrors seem pretty exciting. I know some people think that they're pretty volatile, but all I need to do to direct them away from that opinion is to show them Brood War ZVZ. <laughs> it's, it's a completely yeah, different series. Right. Um, no, nah, man, it's... Um, yeah. I've had tier three ZVZs in Cosmonarchy. I'm like, you don't even get to Brood Wars tier three in, in Brood Wars. Yes. ZVZ, so. Yeah. It's like one in a thousand games or something, maybe even less. Pretty right? much. Yeah. Wow. Unless you play on dumb maps like Crossing Fields or something. Right, right. Fair. So we're going to get into this, and uh, we do have the, the pick ban in your DMs. I'm not sure if you can access those with your current setup. Uh, if people are, if there's I ever. Can, Anything like that, I can always read them out. I'm going back to single monitor peasantry, but I'll manage. All right, all right. So you will be able to pull it up for the time being. And in that case, I guess I'll just get us started. Are you ready to get into our first map on the yeah. Purgatory? For sure. All righty then. We are jumping into it, and we have Top Ramen in the bottom right, Moon Hunter in the top left. It's an interesting map for it, right? Because we still expect, from the TBTs we have seen, that have been casted outside of uh, Acropolis. We still expect those phalanxes to play an outsized role and take static positions. So it's interesting on this map, you have like your side and my side for those big old ramps. That's right. Another thing worth pointing out is that this is of course in the gauntlet map pool. So this is before Derelict and the Purgatory received their ridge. So this will be low on the gas economy early on for the mains. Obviously that was Ooh, changed going into impactful, it. Right? Yeah, yeah. Especially if you do want to go into those phalanxes. Now they are fairly mineral heavy, but you've got to tear up and all that stuff as well. So that'd be huge. Really yeah, um, yeah, so the bands and picks we've got to talk about. This is the first map, right? Moon Hunter banning Germination. And then we had Top Ramen ban Sideshow. Then Moon Hunter banning Titan Forge. And finally, Top Ramen picked this one. Now, it's a mirror matchup, so I don't know how much you can really read into it. But uh, why they banned Titan Forge, man? It was not static at all. That game we saw casted a while back. Uh, oh, yes. Honestly, it would be. Pretty nightmarish to play in TVT, so I kind of don't blame them. But at that said, it doesn't benefit or not benefit either player. So I know you got to think about mm. how you can be able to handle the nightmare better. Yeah, I, I think maybe uh, it's just down to comfort, like what maps you enjoy in a mirror matchup, right? Uh, also, I think this is this is the second TVT for Moon Hunter in a row. It, as a reminder, he 2 owed Grunch out of the lower bracket. Grunch, who only went to the lower bracket because uh, he mistakenly decided to go out drinking on the day that he was supposed to play in the upper bracket. And he's like, yeah, I'll just take the L. So that was kind of funny. But uh, so it was a DQ. It wasn't like he lost earlier. So he kind of, oh, you know, damn. went out partying too hard and then there was nothing. But hey, this is something. We've got Moon Hunter with an anchor. And meanwhile, on the other side Ooh. of the map, wait, where is it anyway? It's hiding over here, the star pad for Top Ramen. Yeah, I gotta say, uh, I don't know how Moon Hunter feels about this matchup. If he's sort of aware that we're really favoring Top Ramen because he's shown some very impressive macro in, like against me in games, I thought he was pretty strong. So mm -hmm. when I look at this, I definitely think like you know Moon Hunter is gonna have a tough time, and I don't know if that's why he's going for this anchor. I don't know how I feel about double star pad and TVT because I feel like as long as you get some Cyprians out, rapes can be handled. Even watchdogs with repairs, it feels like you need a critical mass of rates before you can even start to attack. And if that's the case, you're giving your opponent a lot of opportunity to do other things. But to Top Ramen's credit in this particular situation, when you have an anchor and you have the Mavericks coming, that kind of gives your, uh, you know, you, the defender, a little bit of the advantage where once you destroy this anchor, what is your opponent really going to do? They've expended a lot of minerals, a lot of their early pressure. And that True. means that you have time to mass up the extra rates that you need. So I don't know. It could go either way, but I'm kind of like, even though I'm not super sure about the, t the double star pad play, I'm also not really super sure that Moon Hunter is going to counter it properly. His anchor has lifted off and he will start to make his way into the main. 
that was super delayed, by the way. Yes. Like, remember, it's going to be in position earlier. Now, that Rafe is going to have a bad time if it does not fly away. When's he going to land it? Mason's going to get oh, no. under this, but yep. Tom Roman's sluggish, but he does not land it. Oh, no. Ooh. Moon Hunter, oh, what oh, have you oh. done? I think he looked Pretty. away at the worst time possible, and now out come the uh, Mavericks. Of course, he does scout this strategy, but he doesn't kill a single Wraith. No focus fire there. That's a little awkward. Pretty sluggish and delayed execution there, I thought, for Moon Hunter, unfortunately. It didn't seem like he was very well prepared to get that in sharply. Yeah, there'll be a Savant as the initial choice here. A single Wraith going to leave the building since it's full HP. The other one's going to slowly get repaired. Yeah, Savants will crush those Wraiths as well. I mean, there's so many options for Terran. Unlike, uh, I think, Zerg and somewhat Protoss struggle a bit. Terran has these great early splash options. They can handle them pretty easily. I mean, I don't mind if you just make a few and kill a couple Masons and then use them as scouts or whatever, but he's gone double port here and he's continuing to produce them, so I know this may backfire. Yep, it feels like it's definitely a possibility. We're going to have four Wraiths on the field. This one just being used to scout. Sees the Covenant. Also catches the army move out. Does a little bit of harassment, but nothing too significant. And he's now going to pull his Wraiths closer to the middle of the map. He has an anchor over here. Confirms his opponent doesn't have another base. Didn't have a treasury in production. Of course, we now see a Fulcrum being added, as well as another Watchdog to sort of cover the uh, production so that Wraiths can't maybe heck all the add-ons or something. And that means that Top Ramen I mean, is kind of just going for the macro, right? This is already super threatening, right? Just with a single Savant, you're kind of like, well, I don't really want to engage with my Wraiths. Uh, That's right. But he can hold his ramp, of course, with this anchor. I mean, Maverick's going to have a bad time trying to push up against that. Well, I don't know. If you use Power Siphon, does it affect everything in the anchor? Mm, I don't think it debuffs any units in the anchor right now. It's uh, sounded like a common thing oh. that people have mentioned is that, unfortunately, it doesn't quite work out that way. Now, right now, Dissuaded from the My ramp. Next question. Can kind of they, front loaded it. Can they penetrate Hurakans? Hmm. Well, it's a two armor pen, and the Hurakan has two armor, so no. You need a Hurakan to penetrate Hurakans. Or some other form of armor rend. <laughs> Fourth, or sorry, third stockade. Yeah, coming. is that how kinetic pen work? You have to exceed? You don't have to match the armor? Yes, yeah, it used to match, and then we changed it to exceed. A while back. you I think you were still around in that time, because that was when, like, Gorgacores were trying to be used versus Cyprians, but it was penetrating Skits and Gorgs and Iziracores and all sorts of stuff. Now, that's a pretty dangerous flock of raids here. At all, honestly. Yeah. Savant now being withdrawn. There's no anchor over here, so, you know, there's some element of danger here. The Goliath out, so reducing well, that damage. One Goliath, yeah, going to be a severe disincentive because it has the range, right, and obviously the splash with the Savant. So I'd be surprised if Ram gets too much done here. Um, I mean, he could be really fancy with my magic box and try and like trade Masons. Right? He's going to get intercepted. Well, he's really getting intercepted here. Not really the best lineup for the Savant, but still can't really handle it. Yeah, I mean, they're not clumping because he doesn't have anything that will automatically make it clump. He wants to maybe pick the Savant here. Unfortunately, he's getting revealed by it. And as a result, the Goliath is taking pot shot after pot shot. Now cycling back with that Savant, you can see the rates constantly trying to keep Moon Hunter engaged on this side of the map. I don't know that this is going top Robin's yeah, way, man. He's losses. Yeah, there's not really any picks, not really anything happening. Obviously, the third base star stymied. We've got multiple treasuries that aren't able to do anything right now, and the rate's just continuing to move back in. It looks like maybe they picked one unit, and that was it. Well, this sort of shows what I was talking about, even with pretty minimal defensive effort, I would say, just with the right units. Yeah. The race really struggled to do anything here, right? Now, Raman's put up this big Bioforce. I think the support's still going to be fairly effective against that. Well, hang on. Oh, He's my God. Smash damage on the fabric. Absolutely wasting them. Oh, man. Up. Well, unfortunately, a bunch of them were kind of caught behind good. it. And the stimmed, yeah. uh, stimmed Mavericks definitely came out on top for Moonhunter. But now... Oh no, one of the Savants immediately ended up hitting the deck there due to the uh, anchor selection. And now here come the Wraiths to harass them on the way out. Well, uh, you know, you don't mind trading down the Wraiths at this point. I mean, obviously you'd love to keep a couple of them in reserve. Uh, one Savant staying Ooh, alive. Oh, he didn't get it. Yeah, Yeah, at least it. you got some use out of them. Oh, there it is. Point. Oh, oh, okay, he does follow up again. Well, it just shows how tenacious Top Ramen is trying to get any value he can, even in this situation. It's pretty bad for him. He does have the work account lead, but he's just landing his second treasury now. I did not see if Moonhunter had a quarry yet. That is natural? No, uh, nothing over here for uh, the homie. Mm, well, and a third base can be come up uh, online for Top Ramen. Top Ramen's superior macro is showing here, then. Like, he's keeping the worker lead, even though he hasn't explained his mission. But no, no quarry. Whoa, no quarry for either player. Welcome to TBT, I guess. Uh, that's that's right. pretty full on. Oh, my God. 
This uh, four kill Maverick killed a, a Shane. Uh, no, it killed a Savant and three other Mavericks. He's just a fucking Slayer hero unit. This anchor not being repaired though. This is a problem, and the Savant's trying to see if they can do some nice splash work onto those Masons. Now starting to repair the anchor, and just in the nick of time. And now the Phalanx is out, so I think this push will be held. Yeah, There's an even idol on. Oh my god! As well, because they will range a bunker with many. Oh, that's actually really dangerous. It could somehow pick up the Phalanx, but I don't think it's quite enough. Well, the Eidolon's still cloaked here. Yep. The repair's coming down, but is it enough? If he can pick that off, that'd be absolutely huge. Yeah, look at that. Needs to actually reveal it, and yep, that's dead. That's a dead Phalanx. Idol on meta. Oh my god. Even interrupting the second anchor being the produced. the money gain that uh, Moon Hunter gets there. Like how much one Idol on costs versus one Phalanx. It's slightly more gas, but the rest of it's a lot cheaper. Oh yeah. Well, there's going to be a third anchor on the field in a moment here to try to hold that. Of course, no uh, no significant shenanigans. The Wraiths actually, pro funnily enough, proximity decloak Wraiths running in to proximity decloak the idol on <laughs> is kind of a funny counter considering. Terran versus Terran. It's all smoke and mirrors, man. All about deception. Three o'clock going to come online. Sh think three o'clock. Wait a minute. I've seen this before, but I shouldn't say that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, the problem, real, real. Neblime, is that not only have you not seen it yet, you still didn't see it, unless you went back and watched the cast. Oh, don't, that's unnecessary, <laughs> man. Ah, oh, damn. <laughs> don't have to do it like that. But hey, we better not We better not talk about things that are yet to be. Uh, so it's oh. interesting. The Eidolons do seem to have a role here. Yeah. Oh, classic. Yeah. Classic Simpson. Look at that. They're still harassing. Even though the Phalanx obviously clearly beat them in a fight, and even the Phalanx have more range than if you can't get the vision, uh, they can actually run and snipe them. I'm just wondering in a longer game now how important that would be. Man, I'm already getting ideas for my return to terror. Oh no, he got revealed by the Mason and instantly slapped out of the server. Phalanx splattering him. Yeah, I guess the main problem right now is that you trade the AoE potential, oh my goodness, of the uh, Savant by using the Covenant Q, and you only have one Covenant right now, so, you know, it's a little bit dicey. He is harvesting Vespine from his natural, but Moon Hunter is definitely behind economically. It's only seven workers in theory, but it's just more efficient down here for Moon for uh, Top Ramen, rather. And of course, there's this quarry coming up here as well, the secret base. Now, double Eidolon, but the Stimmed Mavericks are going to try to reveal it. Indeed, getting close enough to reveal one of them. And as soon as an Anseal comes out, it does feel like Moon Hunter isn't going to be able to do too much. In fact, I'm kind of surprised that Top Ramen took so long to realize that, because of course there will be the detection. But I like the counter Anseal from uh, from Moon Hunter because it does mean that he'll be able to do a little bit here, pulling his Eidolons back wisely so they don't get sniped on the other end, so he can focus on trying to defend the homestead. Just a little bit of Wraith harassment, only claiming a single Mason so far. I'll make that two. Kind of just hovering there for the time being as we see ever further economic developments here for Top Ramen. Oof! Oh my god, it's brutal. Oh no! What a massacre, honestly. Ooh, but they do end up sniping a Phalanx back, so I guess it's not all... You know, it's a lot of, a lot of dead Mavericks. I'm not quite so sure that that matters too much here. Oh my god. I step away for one second, and I'm seeing Rafe's killing watchdogs. What is this? That's right. That's right. Hey, a phalanx ended up getting popped on here, but a lot of dead him. mavericks. A lot of dead mavericks. By the way, the Anseal's here to, to, to detect that, but it was taking a little bit of time there. And now <laughs> <laughs> revealing it with the workers. <laughs> what did you say? Oh, that's how you do it, man. He could have done that a bit earlier, honestly. He didn't have to lose those. I know, yeah. Even could have lifted one of the watchdogs. It sounds crazy, but that's actually pretty effective. Yeah. Yeah, I, I feel like the crisis management here for Moon Hunter hasn't been too solid, you know? I cannot believe how much value he's getting out of these rapes when really they were already, like, defeated, like, five minutes ago. Kind of crazy. We do have a, a lot more phalanxes, though. The Eidolon count's slowly growing. He's only got four, and the Goliath is just here to saunter on in and get dealt with. Okay, here's the, the million dollar question. Nine range versus eight sight range. Okay, well, there you go. If you can get vision on the enemy Anseals, you can actually outrange their detection with the Eidolon. How many would you need to one shot it after its shield is gone? Because you don't want to uh, piss it off and make it run away, right? Yeah, that's right. So obviously it's 80 damage and each shot is 15 with no armor pen, but there's only one armor. So... Yeah, I mean, I think you would need you, you would need six, yeah. And that's what he almost had, but oh, not quite. Oh. It's just coming out. 
Yeesh. Obviously, oh man, he lost a lot of gas there. Obviously, clearly in favor of Raman, though, with the shield. And yeah. obviously, I feel like what Moon Hunter needed is phalanxes of his own. He doesn't need to match top Raman's count, but he needs to stop units coming forward. Uh, and I don't know if there's any good counter to the answer. Oh, no. Well, hang on. He's pushing forward now. Life's going to be good for the front line. And I mean, the unseen phalanx with long the moon down. He is sieging up. It's oh, going to be a yeah. Huge volley. Yep, that's all the clumped up Terran units there getting broken by Top Ramen, and his base up here has been operating with double gas mining at 3 o'clock. So he is sitting pretty on so much production over here. He Look at this. He's realized, hey, i got to fix my rally, otherwise Pronogo will yell at me. And Moonhunter didn't quite get that memo. Atlas coming, and it's actually got good tech tempo compared to his opponent, despite having less Vespine, but I don't know that he can hold out long enough to make it work any, anything in the Ministry. Maybe it'll narrowly get up and running. Looks like it will, but it'll have to lift as soon as this army actually consolidates. Yeah, of course, uh, Raman powering ahead on the macro here. Look at the worker count, oh, 65 yes. to 37. Of course, yeah, like you say, the extra gas from that is going to be instrumental. I mean, a T1, I'm not sure what the best use of minerals is, because... Uh, we see the key units here, uh, the Phalanxes and uh, Moonhunter a bit off-brand going for the Eidolons, but they do see much more effective than anything else has been in the lives, though. They do have some potential just as an assault unit. Yeah, that's right. Savant's good versus the Wraiths, but not stellar versus anything else since they just get splattered by those all-important Phalanxes. And I feel like this yeah, is yeah, the death yeah. push, right? Brahman is just too strong with Ansel's man. He's Ansel man. That's and right. He is going to crush through. He's going to take out the natural at least. I think the game will end here. Those island ones kind of showing that they're worth more than I might have thought, but uh, it's not going to be quite enough. Yeah, that's right. There was another stockade there. I like the idea of a second covenant or something. He makes the tier two, but he doesn't have anything that he can make use of it with. He's not building sentinels. Even if he did, Phalanx has outranged them. Even with cliff advantage factored in, it's still a benefit for the Phalanx. He's going to try to evacuate with all of his workers, but of course they'll get splattered by the Stimpact Mavericks. Charging on in, it's a brutal firing squad. Oh, I was gonna say, he doesn't know where that all it is, but the answer's ready. Oh, this will turn to start, not today. No, not quite. The treasury, it looks like it might be able to live to fight another day. There's plenty of Harakans to go around, but I don't think there's gonna be enough, yeah. Oh, man. I always say you can bust any position with Harakans just a matter of how many you need. Yes. And I don't think there's quite enough. No, not quite, looking at all of these ones. GG is called, and that'll be the first game going the way of Top Ramen. It was interesting. Uh, we don't definitely bring something we might not have expected. With that gas investment in the Covenant, you know? I was just thinking about that. Later in the game, it would be convenient if you're like, oh, I'm just going to make five Eidolons now. But if you're not making a whole bunch of Savants or whatever all the time, is it really worth it investing all that gas into Covenants? I don't know. It seems a bit tricky. It does seem a little bit tricky, but uh, as we do indeed have Top Ramen taking the first game, it's something that makes me think like, okay, well, we've obviously uh, given Moonhunter the higher seed in this matchup because he's got more experience and he made it pretty good into the last qualifier. And mind you, Top Ramen, even though he's good, like he's unproven is my thinking. And so that's why I seeded him kind of low relative to where, you know, maybe his objective level of skill is. But, you know, he dealt with Benno in the opening and now he's up against Moonhunter who has a lot of, of experience with it. But that that anchor move, I feel like that did not inspire much confidence. Now going on to Fata Morgana, we got to see if he's got what it takes to play a little bit better. He selected this map. It got through the pick and ban. Top Ramen has played on it, but Moon Hunter may be thinking he wants to make use of that rush distance. He's in the top left, Top Ramen. True to his initials in the top right. Of course. That's so how you know he's going to win this game, obviously. I would say so. I would say so. I mean, I was I was saying that recently because I was casting a match between him and Biddy B. They played on Maxium, the four spawn version of Axiom, which is uh, looking mm. pretty pretty good. I feel like it's uh, probably good enough. Uh, the 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 cute thing about uh, that is that he ne he didn't spawn in the top right in any of those, and I was like, well, I can't predict him to win if he's not going to spawn in the top right. <laughs> yeah, so. Well, you know, it's interesting. We do have the two player Acropolis coming up. This is very remembered as the two player Acropolis. Yes. It's a shame there isn't just like only two people who are contenders or something. Then we'll be really oh yeah, yeah, for sure. We do it. We do have many contenders in here. We'll see either these players getting in. Who knows how far they'll go? Assuming they qualify the battlements, that's what they have to get past first. I was saying in the last cast, right, that Gauntlet has been really cut through, and this being the last game, they have everything to play for again. 
Yeah, that's right. I mean, you know, Top Ramen looking fairly comfortable so far. Both players opening Fulcrum this time around, whereas previously they both opened uh, Stockade. So interesting that they've uh, kind of mirrored themselves yet again, but obviously the the deviations were very quick. It was like a proxy anchor into Covenant for Moon Hunter, and then Top Ramen went for the Star Pad. Now he has pocketed his scout over here, so I wonder what he's thinking. I think he's checking for proxies, as Moon Hunter is a very cheesy Terran. I was, you know, I gotta admit, I did have a moment of weakness that here in Neblime, because I, I think, you know, Moon Hunter's a pretty cool guy for sure, but I was just so high on Top Ramen when you said that he was, like, able to beat you with the minimal practice, and he's, like, you know, demonstrating good macro play. I felt like, you know, having him in the tournament would be really solid, so I was kind of rooting for him, and I was even thinking, like, do I tell him that Moon Hunter's a cheesy boy? But I was like, nah, <laughs> Top Ramen will figure it out, I'm sure, and you know what? If he doesn't and Moon Hunter surprises, then hats off to Moon Hunter, man, proving it, so... You know, both ways could go both ways, but uh, right now, Top Ramen definitely mirror. favors. Yeah, double Fulcrum mode. Or the Vulture Mirror is like it's probably pretty static with all the mines. You just kind of sit behind your mines, like, hey, screw you over there, buddy. Yep. No, screw you. You know. Well, it's uh, it's it's funny it because seem... mines proc on workers and you know hover units or whatever you want to call it, like vultures and archons and stuff, where previously they didn't. So they proc on everything now. Yeah, you know. Um, I think it's a more defensive option generally with the vultures, but going to Fulcrum Vulture is generally like, oh, I'm going to run in with 10 vultures, you won't expect it, and I'll kill you. Yeah. But since you both have mines to defend, it kind of seems impossible to actually do anything. In fact, if I think about it, this is the true, like, siege tank line type matchup. In TBT and Brood War, you see a lot of, like, vultures spammed out early, but they can avoid the mines, of course, so they run around all over the map, do a bunch of run by the stuff. But in Cosmonarchy, I feel like defensive lines are going to thicken up really quickly if you both make a lot of vultures, because you can both move forward and place the mines to secure a position. I'm also a little curious as to how we've seen such minimal quarry play for the openers from both uh, both players, right? Uh, until eventually Top Ramen did get his quarries. Moon Hunter never did. So he's going to go for a Ministry, uh, which is a curious one. He's building it right over here for his natural. Not going to go for the, the treasury for the tempo. Wants the security. And maybe it's warranted with all the vultures coming across the map, laying down his mines. I think they'll burrow just in time for Top Ramen to be <laughs> dissuaded from that. So we saw it. Oh, he wants to bait them out, though. I think he did see them, but he's yeah. trying to bait them out, maybe. Or he yeah. just didn't realize how much their range was. Well, I don't know. I mean, it's six versus five right now, and the closer reinforcement point definitely favoring Moon Hunter here. One of them going to get sniped and off. pounced upon. Him. There we go. See you later. Oh, one shot. Yeah. I guess that's the critical mass. Six to one shot. No, well, definitely an option, right? Just like the Eidolons versus the uh, Ant Seals after their shields pop, which is such a niche thing. a good number, I guess. <laughs> Yeah, not quite seven. Veek in shambles. Treasury <laughs> on the way here for Top Ramen. And I mean, this is a map by Veek seven, so he can't be in too many shambles. Yeah, yeah, it's true. We got two Veek seven maps in this Acropolis, right? Uh, it's Impetus, the Purgatory, and this one. So three, actually. Oh, right. It's three from Veek, three from Viddy B, one from me, and one from Shambler. So that's very nice. Works out. Well, it's good to see Shambler sneaking in there. I like the sort of variety of contributed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, eventually I'll be making more maps too and hope with any luck they'll be worthy inclusions, but I've been so busy with all the tutorial stuff and the video stuff and the, actually running the events. So I'm glad and very grateful that we have the uh, contributors that we do that can actually make the maps when I'm over here like, well, I'd like to, but I can't. <laughs> ideally in the long term, right, we want to be like community maps. It's not going to be like, here's the official maps made by the developer. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, I think... Uh, just like uh, what we've seen out of StarCraft 1 and StarCraft 2, for that matter, co you know, community-built maps definitely seem like a good idea if you get, like, maybe community is the wrong word. It's like people in the community become map-making experts in some way, you know what I mean? And they can kind of focus on that. And then, you know, I'm fine. At, like, ideally, the developers would still be engaged, so you'd still see, you know, if, if Veek7 and I are the main developers in this analogy, just like we are for Cosmonarchy, you'd still see maps made by us for competitive play being effective and good and not just like included because of nepotism or something but <laughs> looks like we had a well, little bit of a pause yeah by the way about this ministry i think i like it if you got a quarry with it because yeah. he didn't get a quarry immediately maybe the thing is you should want to go up to four cues immediately and spam that out but he didn't do that instead he's got no quarries he still has tons of gas so ramen with less investment will have more worker cues here but uh he is not really using them as much he's falling behind a bit but uh, are we going to see tier two moon hunters get banked right up? Looks like that is yeah, the plan. There it is. Actually, I do like that actually because then you're not spending gas on the quarries. You're just saving it only for tier two. So it does make sense. 
Yep, and he can add the Corys on the follow-up as well, because each one of them is 100 Vespine, so it is going to cut a lot into it. And this is a very underexplored matchup, because we have so few Terrans, like, historically or whatever. Uh, I was excited that Grunch was playing. He's since switched to Zerg, which is kind of funny. But Erbmon is playing Terran, so I hope that he comes in and just starts spanking. Obviously, uh... It's all right, man. I know you were as planning on switching As soon as I win this Yeah. I'll be back. Okay, but what happens if you lose? Are you going to stick to Zerg? I guess I'm staying Zerg forever. I can't change what I win. I don't know. Oh, okay. I see how it works. Well, unfortunately, there is... Uh, one thing that you will notice about the mine laying, I do like this little area to stop any um, drops from coming in. By the way, it's even worse for drops because you'll unload one unit and the lobotomy line will stun the unit and the transport and then you'll be able to respond yeah. to it, right? You won't be able to unload any units until you're unstunned. So. Imagine if you had a watchdog there, the dropship would just be helpless. Yep. Then it would just die. Yeah, you're um, thinking. I do wish you spread yeah. them out a bit more, but yes. overall, I think it's a great move. That was going to be something that I was going to say next is that definitely putting like the mines a little bit apart is a big deal because it's not like spider mines where maybe they'll multiple connect and you'll deal multiple instances of damage. Although most of the time, I feel like they often d kill themselves uh, with the explosions. But even if that were uh, not happening, you still you don't get much of an effect. It's not like the stuns increase in time the more stacks you get or something, the more hits you get. Imagine so. if they did. On the <laughs> yeah, you'd just never come uh, out of stasis. <laughs> be over. Now, Moonhunter committing a sort of classic TBT mistake here. Despite earlier having the Vulture superiority, he did not use it to establish a forward position in the map. Yep. So he's going to find himself contained in his natural. Uh, yeah. And absolutely. it's going to be very hard to get out of that efficiently, but he does have this tier two. Is that a mantle I see building? Yes, that's I right. I think counteracts it. Decent at busting tank lines. What is quite good is the Durandal, but it's never cost efficient. It's just good at busting positions, so you need quite a few of them. And no Phalanx is here for Moonhunter just yet. His Palladiums did just finish. He's going to engage with Mass Vulture for the most part. Got three Goliaths mixed in there, a couple Cyclops for good measure, but un all, all the Vultures are going to be uh, cleared already, so the Cyclops kind of surplus to requirements right now. Loses his nerve and lets Top Rummer get away when I think he would have cleared all of that. Oh, yeah, I think so, too. Him. He just didn't want to deal with all the splash damage, right? And it will be Durandals out of the mantle. Yeah, I think they're choice. decent against Phalanxes, but Phalanxes can sort of scale to a point, I think, where they will uh, do well against them. Yeah, there's another Palladium as well. So it might be Mass Phalanx with the Durandals, and the idea being that you'll use Phalanxes okay. for the range and Durandals to break the positions. Yeah, I think that is a very strong way to do it, right? Anytime you're holding the phalanx is with the defense, anytime you look at a position, you think, oh, I want to get in there, you send in the Durandals on the ground. So I think it's a good way to do it. I would have loved to see a Wyvern or two, though, because, uh, you know, Top Roman doesn't have anti air everywhere, and if you find some phalanxes that are mm. exposed, it'd be huge. Oh, I mean, just remember back to that last set we casted between the Beaver and Benno. I mean, Beaver really showing how powerful Wyverns can be if you yeah. throw like five of them into the enemy mineral line. Absolute yeah, evisceration. They can absolutely crush. Yeah. Top Ramen has caught up in workers, but still in the same base count with actually Moonhunter being able to cap this geyser at the oh. third. So it looks like we'll have a lot more Vespian income for Moonhunter. Obviously, he is at tier two when his opponent is not. We have a Vestry being I added guess on. Ramen never looked at that third. And that that shouldn't have just been there. So no problem for Moonhunter. He can set that up. Yeah, he left one Vulture to camp it after killing the worker that was building, and then he rotated over the bridge. So he didn't end up finishing the treasury off, and tr it wasn't canceled. Uh, credit to Moonhunter. So he's definitely in a position where he's ahead. It's a funny, man. cheeky expansion coming in here for Top Ramen. Is this just how Top Ramen plays, man? Hidden bases everywhere? Yeah, he might as well. And that's a pretty ballsy base to take, too, because you've got double gas, and you've got all of these like little avenues where you can try to isolate the little entrances or whatever, yeah. but... You know, it's still, I think it's quite tough to hold from both angles, right? It's not like you have total map control on the right side. You're not splitting the map. So in TVT, this is an exciting map to actually play, I think. Well, Phalanx is caught on siege here, but there are so many of them. I do not think Moonhunter wants this fight. Oh my god. Now, this is going to be a disaster for Moonhunter if he doesn't pull back. Then again, getting in there with the um, spreading there, they do do work, as you can see, but they're up against an overwhelming force. Yeah, the only the biggest issue too is that the Durandal doesn't auto. It's not like the Harakan where the weapon range is pretty low, so they'll automatically kind of start making the phalanxes splash the Goliaths. The weapon range is a little bit more generous for the Durandal, which makes it so that you actually have to move forward in between attacks. And I think that's probably fine all in all, but definitely something that's a little bit scary. It's not just a higher skill ceiling unit, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a floated watchdog here. It's uh, t keeping its distance from its ground-based nemesis. The watchdog standoff. That's right. Or stand up and stand, float off. I don't know. <laughs> Second mantle coming. Well, you know, one watchdog could like move the other. Oh no, getting caught two free phalanxes. Not a lost moon hunter wants to take. He needs to maintain his position. And it's so many phalanxes to ramen. I would not be surprised if he can bust this soon. That said though, as soon as you start moving forward, if the Druidals pounce on it while you're trying to siege and unsiege, that could be devastating. 
does feel like there's opportunity here, but it does. Uh, it also feels like it's on a thread. I mean, Moon Hunter's a lot of resources. He's not really spending the 1,000 minerals plus that he's got currently. He could be adding way like more mantles. I trying to keep it fairly simple just with the two kinds of production structure that will make it a bit easier for him. But yeah, he's going to mash those buttons a bit more. There we go, just queued up more Durandals as well. I mean, I like the comp. I think I think Phalanx Durandal has a lot of uh, leverage in this matchup, but he needs to get more position on the map. We see that Ravid is just expanding where he pleases, not really concerned about the fight that's going on. That's right. He just got a Mason out to the inner six, if you want to call it that, or just the central base, the middle base. Phalanx is on the high ground. That's 16 range, buddy. You got to step back. Really nice position by Raman, by the way. They're not too close to the ramp. They're nice and far back, so that's, that's a really good spot. And, uh, you know, we have to could come around the other side. Oh, he's going to try to attack him here. I think before they might be the same balance. So he's going to get an end seal, which is nice. Yeah, I'll take that. A trade every day of the week. One Goliath for one end seal. Man, playing around the ranges of the Phalanx is something that is actually quite hard to see. I mean, again, it stretches out pretty far, as you can see. So, oh, no, another end oh, seal. Right, so uh, close no, he's drawing oh, the them in, though. 500 IQ. Never mind, they lost vision. Oh, oh Durandal goes down, though. Yeah, you don't want to lose those. That's a bit of gas for sure. And one Goliath for one Ansel, I'd say it's worth it, but maybe not so much the Durandal. I don't know. Because uh, that's from your fancy tier two production structure and all that. That is, again, look at these horses, though. I look at, I look at Green Hunter's army, and I'm thinking it's pretty strong. It but, is, uh, but he's got to get through this position, wins. right? I mean, the Phalanx is on the high ground, are still going to be dishing out a lot of damage. He's finally starting to siege out his own ones, but his front line's already gone. Some of these units need to get activated. Moon Hunter being Here's very... What's uh... better front line than Phalanxes? They seem pretty good at front line to me, but he's sieging them all up now. I don't know. It's definitely a little rough. I think the Cleric's buying Top Ramen a lot of time. Extra Phalanx Ooh. shots. I know we've taken that up, yeah. I kind of like what Moon Hunter was doing, where he had a combo of, like, siege and unsieged Phalanxes. Yeah. It was decent. Yeah, just too strong a position there. Uh, from like three sides almost getting hit. If he came around the other ramp, I think he could have easily busted through that sort of attack. Counterfract is out. Although I think they're going to struggle with those Phalanxes because they're going to amble slowly into range and Phalanxes get free shots. Yep. They're very slow units. I guess yeah, another point them. for there is that the it felt like Moon Hunter wasn't engaging with most of his forces. Like half of them were kind of not in that fight. And now we've got a Ramses finally dealing with this watchdog. Not going to be a super effective unit in this matchup, I don't think, at least not with the units we're seeing right now. But yeah, now that he's made that attack and lost all that stuff, Moon Hunter's really opened up a counterattack here. Raman going to seize this middle area, and again, I think as we see TWT more and more develop, I think positions like this are going to be absolutely dominating with that range advantage. It's going to be very hard to move armies around. Oh, Do man, we still not have an Atlas? I think he's thinking he about an doing it in the top right, but he still doesn't have the gas because he just went down and with a Palladium and with three more Fulcrums. What's he think? So much minerals. I tell you. Hurricanes, man, they're the future. If you have just like 20 Hurricanes in any fight, it's going to help. It's kind of crazy that Top Robin has such an advantage and still doesn't have tier two off of it. <laughs> the Phalanx on the bridge. Yeah. It's going to get a little bit of damage dealt, but I don't know if it's going to be too much. Oh, there we go. There's a second one on the way out. I guess that goes to show, though, that, uh, you know, attacking isn't everything. You don't just auto win if you yep. have a higher tier, right? There's more to it than that. Man, how does Moonhunter have so much gas, though? He's going to go for Tier 3, is he? I think so. He's pretty close to that break point. Just needs a little bit more, and he can start go ahead and drop it. And, you know, this is a definitely a tech rush from him, but he is in a very fragile position, hoping to use the bridges to his advantage. But he doesn't have any fodder. Like, there's no buildings over here, for example. And look at this over the bridge. Oh, boy. Shelling back and forth. I don't know, man. Using the clerics to spot and everything. I don't know if that's, that's intentional. That's totally worth it, honestly. Yeah. I say make Hurricanes, but honestly, maybe just spamming clerics. It's just like this uh, weird, like, tanky, like, decoy would actually be pretty good. Oh, here's the wide bones, but there's lots of... Oh, yes. Plenty. He needs to bank up a huge amount of more skill that, or oh, he's going to use harassment. Finally, he clears that little contain position. That'd be there for a while. But now Raman, pretty much in control of the entire map. That's right. This ministry in the center is finished. Tier 3 now getting started. So we're probably like two, three minutes away from Moonhunter being able to deploy diadems and similar things to really Dude, put the hurt on the top ramen. Imagine how much damage it would do for this formation. Oh, my God. Yeah. Crazy stuff, man. You'd instantly see I it shoot up to 1,000 off of one shell. And here we go. Dropping some uh, oh, he finds turrets it. here. But, yeah, like, look at this. I mean... He's in instantly starting to pivot some of his units across, and there really just isn't that much here for Moon Hunter. He's got so many minerals, but half, half of his units are behind the mineral line over here. I'm not sure quite why. His wyverns can maybe cycle over to try to harass this, but Vulture's coming on down. Delay, at least. 
Yeah, they can deal with that one Goliath at least. And, uh, That's right. Delay this. Well, damn, one Goliath plus Cleric can actually deal that? Well, the Vulture's here. Well, he actually sneaks past a lot of his, like, sort of mineral only units here, so this is quite good just to delay the fall of this base. I think it's totally worth it. Oh, yeah, big time. Wait, Ramses penetrate Goliath? That's right, they've got three armor pen. Yeah, Pushing across the bridge really over here. Oh, yeah, great sense by Ramen there, where he's like, okay, you're pretty forces over here pretty inefficiently. What if I attack over here? Although, uh, we don't have to get baited down into the fight a bit more than he needs to, I think. Oh, no, the Goliaths are indeed going to start tickling that. The Phalanx is ke being kept alive by the clerics. It's not looking too hot here. How many clerics do you need to outheal a Phalanx in Siege Mode, I wonder? Oh, uh, I don't remember what the healing rate was. It's on the website somewhere, but... Oh man, they don't have their fancy new graphics. Next, next. Oh yeah, I know. <laughs> they look so cool now. Yeah, the blue nano gun patching up even yeah. the mech. Big thing. Pretty awesome. Look, man, I don't know. I think Moonhunt is still in this because uh, he can definitely avoid just completely dying. Although a triple drop might be dangerous. Get, if he gets those uh, diadems up, like you say, you can push anything back. But man, that drop. Is it going to drop on the mines and get cleaned up by the rams? Does he want to see it? Either that, or it just avoids them and lands right next to the data. It kills it at ninety-nine percent. Everyone cries and goes home devastated. Yeah, I think the Daedal is going to finish just fine, but we do have yet another push up to this 9 o'clock position. Of course, he comes down here and finds a Ministry on this location and starts a Sentinel, as you do. That's a little cheeky, but really, that's showing you the signs of the times. I mean, Top Ramen, he's got so many more bases than he even knows what to do with. Oh, as soon as these forces move out of the Mineral Line, a drop comes in, even complete with a Phalanx. Eesh, well, a lot of splash damage. Yeah, I mean, he has so many minerals, though. I don't know if you even really care about the bases at this point. It's an Iron Foundry, no diadems. He's got so mm. much money he could spend, but he doesn't want to make those for some reason. Man, why is everyone sleeping on diadems? It's not like they're new. It's not like we haven't seen them before. <laughs> oh, man, Top Ramen. In range of the treasury now. I don't know how he snuck in there. That's right. I think we don't have to push this back. He has to his forces, but at the same time, the Iron Clock getting hit. Oh, what boy. What is he going to come out of the Iron Foundry? He's trying. He's trying to hold on to things, but unfortunately, I mean, okay, well, one point is to make. There's no more anti-air. There's like one Goliath left, so the Wyverns can definitely clean this. Treasury stays alive, but does need to be repaired. The ministry will take a lot longer to bring down, thanks to what it's all about. The Sentinel cracking shots off over there as well. And we have a drop Man. coming in for Goliath reinforcement, sandwiching the workers at the fourth. This is looking real ugly for Moon Hunter all of a sudden. You know, the Unseed Phalanx and the Goliaths are just like really low DPS on the ground. They're not really that damaging, so it's taking so long clean up this space. Oh, uh, look at that. He just airlifted the Goliaths up to this space, too. Ooh. He's like, yeah, whatever. Now this is a bit rough. No, is that... I don't even remember the name of that unit. That's man. the Pazuzu. That's not the one he wants. I oh, know that. Oh, yeah, no. Pazuzu's he's right. lifted his Daedala. Where's he going with it? That's right. He can land it. Okay, he's going to land it. All right. Yeah. I'm just about to build the Atelier, right? Let's still... Uh, oh, yes. Yeah. Cool. That's a blast <laughs> from the past. Sentinel gets cleaned up down here. Not that that base was really necessary for Top Ramen. He's put taken him to school, and Moon Hunter has not spent his money. Just look at how much money this man has. Yeah, dude, if he had two diadems, he would at least be completely secure on his three bases here. Oh, Rams is going to get that pretty easily. Oh, well, they're not focusing it. Now they are. Oh, there we go. A little bit of a che cheeky mine. Unfortunately, the Phalanx is going to get splashed by the uh, allied ones, but not dead. Still alive. Yeah, so he still maintains. Oh, look at this. Ooh, nice. Oh, uh, uh, no, it has a Phalanx in it. Oh. It died. Ooh, unfortunate. But yeah, good defense there. Now, see, these Pazuzus, right, they're like mobile, like, anti-specialist units, aren't they? So not really the best for busting these big defensive lines out of Yeah, so they apply an on-hit debuff, and that on-hit debuff makes it so that you take damage uh, when you attack. So, and that can kill you as well. So, you know, it's it can be useful, but it's mostly for, like, really high-end single targets. And at this point, there's a lot yeah. of mech units that you need. I would love to see, you know, Paladins even, although I know people think that unit is a meme. It kind of is, but... It is a meme. It's terrible. Don't make it. I think you could use it. This man would have you out here making Cyclops. Don't listen to him. Don't listen, trust Cyclops him. would be excellent inside uh, Top Ramen's base. The problem is, I don't know how you're going to get in there. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Zephyr Calls would be excellent if they're just inside your base. That doesn't really mean anything, right? That's right. Oh, you need to drop them, obviously. Now, Wyverns are... Going to take care of this. The treasury did indeed end up falling. I can't believe there's no diadems, man. I can't believe it. The Daedal is coming for Moon Hunter. Diadems? We've got Penumbra coming, so that's one thing. Yeah. It's a unit, but again, not really great at busting siege lines. So I feel like the Phalanx is one of the better, cheaper counters to it. Now, the Pursuit are going to get in here and do some damage, but you just going to get killed by Phalanxes, right? These are not the units you need. Well, as we talked about, it's a building you really need, but... Uh... That's yes, that's right. There is a building you really need. But for whatever reason, Moonhunter being an honorable Terran, not interested in building the diadem. 
And you can see he spent down his money. Seen, so, as we have seen in other games, the Minotaur also a pretty good option if you get a oh, yeah. line of assemblies. It can really, really bully positions like this and really low tier units. Honestly, the Ramsey is doing pretty good work compared to what we thought it would come out yeah. from. You know, like the fact that it penetrates Goliaths is probably an eye opener for some. Yeah, people. I thought that would be kind of a trash unit, but they're actually not bad. I mean, just look at the bases, dude. There's so yeah. many. Ramage is going. Ramage has so much gas. He's getting his own tier three. He's, I don't yeah. think he made a single tier two unit. He's just like, no, nah, I don't need tier two. We're gonna he made a three. mantle at some point because he has Ramses. Yeah, oh, yeah, he's made a couple oh, yeah. of those. That's about it, though. <laughs> oh, there's a Penumbra getting some Ooh. good splash damage. Man, it does do damage though. Huh? Oh yeah, it's, it's not bad. It's only do, doing. Ten, it's only got ten range, so it will suffer the yeah. the phalanx kind of eventually. But if you get enough of them. You know, that's another thing that's worth pointing out here is that Moon Hunter hasn't gotten any sustain. He has no vestry for his single stockade. I don't even know what the stockade was for. He forgot about it too, I guess. Yeah, dude, you have a bunch of shamans with those number. Could have been good. I mean, they are going to do work here against the unit. Oh, to the bridge too. Uh, I mean, if he had like three instead of two, I feel like he crush it. The two's just not wide enough. He's trying to repair. One gets taken out, only one left. The Goliath's hitting it and the phalanxes. It doesn't last much longer. Well, all the clerics are dead. Damage, yeah. Yeah. There's a third one coming. I be a cleric. And if he had that third one a little bit earlier. I know, I know. He's got two more being yeah, produced, and there are about the same time, it looks like. But I think the combined arms of all the tinier mech units are going to break it down. And Top Ramen, qualification point here. He does not need any of your fancy high tier stuff. I mean, he gets it for the aesthetic, but. Uh, he just did it with Goliath Phalanx, man. Solid units. He's playing Brood War out here. Moonhunter's trying to play Cosmonarchy. Ramen's just playing Brood War. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I thought it was a little funny that he said got to go, but that was apparently a mistake. <laughs> it would be pretty awkward if you That's got like to match point like, and then you're like, all right, I'm, I gotta go see you. <laughs> well, imagine instead of saying GG, you say like got to go. It's like yeah. saying, oh, I didn't actually lose, you know. Ah, I just, yeah. uh, I just gotta go. You know? That's right. We're heading on to Derelict. Remember, this is Derelict 1, so still no ridge. And of course, still the same old middle. It's gonna to be top ramen in the bottom left, still not in the top right, not in, not since Fata Morgana, Moon Hunter in the top right. All right, well, I mean, if you're like me, every time you load in this map, you're like, this is Fata Morgana, right? And send your worker to the top left, and you're like, oh shit. There's How no do you here. even confuse it? There's grass here, dude. Yeah, the grass is dead though, look at it, man. it's not doing too good. It isn't doing too good. I mean, it is in a desert, so. It is a derelict area, so what do we That's expect, right? right? We'll have to see what kind really of Derek, ideas right? germinate within huh. the map. Why not put like an entire, just like derelict Terran base? Can you add invincible neutral units and then they can't be controlled? Does it work the same as Brood War where invincible units can't be controlled by stuff like that? Uh, well, yeah, you, you would have to actually damage it enough with, or like cast an ability on it or whatever, and you can't do that if it's invincible. So. I guess you're right. All the control stuff does run on damage, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. Proxy oh, stockade. Wait, what about the mine tyrant? Yeah, well, it, it can't target buildings. So safe. Oh, there you go. Okay, well, I mean, man, the map I'm going to make is going to have this old dusty Terran base. There it is. You can't use. It's just there to annoy you. In fact, it has no terrain. It's just all made of buildings. <laughs> yeah, in the maze of, like, nanite assemblies and, and grand libraries. Well, that is what you can look forward to when Neblon gets his hands on the editor. Now, this proxy stockade right. is pro probably going to be for anchors, right? Like, you'd have to think it's going to float an anchor in. This is the classic Yeah, map. I expect so. He could have lifted in and gone to Rockins, but he's not doing that, so I think you are right. He's going to have to make an egg here, but he's going to have to cut workers, man. How is he going to afford it? Of course, you don't want to make it too fast because you want to be able to fill it up, but I do like the classic three Maverick and one Mason in the um, oh, yes. anchor. And the thing is, you can bring the stockade with you and start oh, yes. making the Rockins. Uh, we don't see it yet. You know, if the Vulture runs across the map to the enemy base, he could get in here, and if the Maverick's kind of just stand on the high ground, you're going to have to pull Masons to bite them. You can't bring your Vulture back and try and run up your own ramp. Yeah, it's a little dangerous. I mean, Top Ramen was looking for proxies earlier. Oh, I think he's going to find it, Nebline. And it's before the anchor even comes in. Yeah, he sees it. He knows what's going on here. This is squeaky bum time for Moon Hunter. My guy. Well, I mean, it's not a Brood War Vulture, so it can't handle the Mavericks that easily. It's still pretty good against them. I thought for sure he was just going to be able to do it, but yeah, you're right. I mean, well, okay. If this was a Brood War, he would have killed all those by now and gone to the opponent's base and taken his lunch money. But oh, no. Oh, oh he that. revealed himself, <laughs> and no mines were laid. Bit of a missed opportunity. Yeah. Look at this. Moon Hunter's going to... Was that Moon Hunter's Mason I saw? Is he going to throw another... Oh, no, that's... That's, that's top, uh, top Ramen's Mason oh, at 3 o'clock, yeah. He gets the land off. That's a bit unfortunate for Ramen. He could have done a lot better there. 
He's stimming yeah. in. The man anchor needs to come along though, and honestly, he needs to lift this stockade here. Lift the stockade, start making hurricanes, bring the anchor with you. This would be very deadly. He's gonna get a bunch of worker kills, it looks like. Has to run back to the anchor, which is not too There we go, forward. dead. Ooh. Dead vulture. Really nice moves there. Baiting him in and then stimming forward and getting him. Doesn't he need to get back into anchor that anchor. He's gonna works. stim back, yeah. Narrowly avoiding the double vulture follow up. He's instead gonna oh, use man, that stim to really put damage on him. Yeah, you gotta be careful you don't lose another one. Now, Raman did go for double focal here, so he has the production. I think this rush is over from Rune Hunter. Um, but he has a worker lead. If he can just go home, defend, macro up, he's looking good here. Yeah, up to three stockades, one of them which is floating back. It looks like he has canceled the rush and uh, is just going to take his advantage. But he listen, he's had he's advantages, Mavericks. it feels like, in all three games so far now, and he hasn't been able to True. get them over the line yet. So definitely not out of the woods, and he's got 500 minerals. I guess you're right, actually, that... Uh, this is kind of par for the course of Top Ramen so far, isn't it? He's probably feeling fine. Oh, doesn't want to lose these though. Oh yeah, and remember those two are very Ramen's. wounded. He led with the healthy one, which maybe you don't you don't hate too much, right? You're thinking to yourself, that's what you yeah. do. Uh, but he doesn't even get a single kill off of that. No connections really. I guess he had to check if there was no stockade at home, he could have just won the game. But yeah, so, uh, looks like we missed the well, opportunity, the exit over here. But there were no uh, dead workers or anything. They end up getting caught yeah, by the guys in the end. Honestly, the best thing to do would be fly the anchor away and live at base somewhere for later or something. Right, yeah. Even just, like, annoy the attempt at expanding or something, right? Well, mines were cleared. No more uh, casualties on the side of Moon Hunter. And Vestry being added. A fourth stockade. So it's pure bio. And he is... He does like have it. enough for a quarry here if he wants it. Look, I like the bio, but you can't be going pure Maverick, man. That is not how you do it. Like Maverick cleric. Bio's good, but Mavericks are bad. That's the way I'll put it, all right? Yeah, that's what a lot of a lot of other Terrans have indeed said that. I have seen Look, some pretty the, sick uh, Maverick moves. So it's I, not that they're too weak to be used. It's just yeah. that you can't rely on them. You can't say like, "Well, my composition is Mavericks," because that's yeah. like okay. Like, it's a pretty weak unit, man. You need something else to make it work. And the Mavericks are just like the the soup in which floats the the good bits. Yeah, they're the broth, you know. The, yeah, exactly for sure. And and they and certainly they look like it when they liquid. explode. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Now, we do have a Covenant with Savants in action here. Ooh. We might see the Eidolons again. And I am I am keen to see that. I think it is definitely a play. If you have, like, a little hit squad of Eidolons, you look for weak spots and just pick off balances yeah. that are sitting there. Oh, um, and even before you get the Phalanxes good. out, there's absolutely no counterplay, especially when there's no Star Pad in play, and we know that there yeah. isn't one right now. Top Ramen going for the expansion instead. Still no Quarry has the Vestry add-on, so... I honestly think it's a bit of a missed opportunity. Like, you know, if you're not going to spend the gas on the quarry, why don't you just throw down two covenants and pump uh, Eidolons? I know they're expensive gas-wise, but still. Well, you can't knock the savants, though. I mean, whether it's vultures for kinetic pain or goliaths for power, siphon, I think yep. they're going to be quite cost-effective here. And with the mavericks to provide the DPS. I mean, this is what I'm talking about. Now I like it a lot more. Mm -hmm. you, know, you have the, the nice little, I don't know what the equivalent of the analogy in here. You've got mushrooms floating in the soup with the savants, I guess. Yeah, yeah, you know? that's right. Listen, man, I'm a... I'm a chicken noodle soup kind of guy if you got it so well i didn't want to say it's like any kind of meat because they're not chunky enough you know that's mm. if you have like the lives in here or something yeah fair yeah or, or hurricanes right yeah we'll add some like you know hot chilies that's yeah hurricanes. there you go and where's the stem it's taking a long three. time moon hunter only now going to surge forward oh right into the mine but it just slows him down it doesn't very stun nice him line. Still a very valuable mine, though, even so. But he is, does have enough mavericks, and we can see their power here and just gunning through this force, have armored as it is. And look at that uh, Savant in the back getting his damage in. That's right. Even That's stealing right. the kill. Ah, uh, yeah. I do think the mavericks were the key instrument there for sure. I mean, the Savant wasn't really super useful. It wasn't in power siphon mode. We do have a second Covenant out coming out now. Still nothing but Savants in production. Uh, has a lot of gas in the bank, though, so we could see a pivot into well, Eidolons. If Raman can't get any Phalanxes out, the Savants will be very useful, but I feel like Phalanxes are going to kind of counter them for the most part. Yeah. Um, so, I don't know, I have to be careful here. As long as he maintains good position on the map, though, I think he's still doing well here. Uh, the worker count's still favoring Moon Hunter as well. Yeah, feels like he's on top of his macro this game. Feels maybe a little bit more uh, powerful. Feels a little bit more like he knows what he's doing. Now, there's only vultures in these anchors, and they won't be within range to actually see that. This second mine maybe will end up costing him a cleric. Not the end of the world. Now, there's only one mine in play right now, so he does have the ability to relay the those. In the top anchor? Vultures. In the top one? In the high ground? Yep. Oh, okay. Damn, it'd be good to put a Goliath there, because they would have hella range. Hey, put, a, put an unseaged uh, phalanx, dude. Yeah. I hear well, they here comes the actual phalanx, and it is going to be sieged, I bet. Obviously. Oh, yes. It's going to really stop any aggression here. Oh, he gets out somehow. Yeah, sneaking out. Let that guy out. Yeah, that might cause a lot of pain for me, Hunter. 
Yeah, well, he doesn't have any defenses over here. Eidolons are coming out, so he wants to fight into this entrenched position. There is no star pad, so Moon Hunter, or sorry, Top Ramen not making the actual uh, sort of read that this is what's coming. He does have a couple of uh, anti-drop sort of mavericks off in a different location. The Vulture, if it does swoop on in, won't be completely uh, able to run Ravage. Now, the Phalanx sieges, but somehow Moon Hunter pulls away in time. Not on attack move. Oh, there's a single anchor over here, and that might be enough. Gonna go ahead and stim yeah, with the one Vulture. Yeah, he's not gonna be able to get any kills here. Hit one. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. Um, about those Mavericks, by the way, I wonder if they're more like anti-scout to stop the Watchdog flying in. I don't think mm. they're actually anti-drop, because there's not enough to deal with a, a Trojan that has much Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah, fair enough. He'll even find the Mason that was making the watch or was going to make the Watchdog, so that's yeah, another nice. asset Top Ramen doesn't have. Moon Hunter definitely on top of things, man. Oh, look, oh, the Phalanx like too, too here, a, little, a little too forward here. That Phalanx is going down. Now, the Eidolons need to be in position so that they can snipe this one at the top. Otherwise, this push is not going to go very far. Well, you can't even see it, though, unless Eesh. something of yours is dying. So yeah. I don't really see this happening. This is not a position that you can sort of finesse your way into. Oh, oh. don't go that close. Now coming okay, in. Okay, now he's going to start again. Oh, the I mine! The mine revealing! Yeah. I don't think this is the play, man. He's going to lose too much trying to do this. I think he just needs to maintain the contain. And the other ones would be good at stopping and breaking out. But now he's lost so much, it's going to be a bit harder. Although going home is also a mistake. Whatever he does, I am not pleased. He can't He can't satisfy me. Yeah, all right. There it is. Well, he's taking a third base. Does that satisfy you, Nebulime? He's going to go up to more, yeah, more work Yeah, that's pretty good. Keys. I'd love for him to take a fourth and a fifth with that many minerals. Oh, yes. That's right. I don't know. All right. Posturing a little bit too lazily with these Eidolons. They should be behind the rest of the forest. That's a mistake for sure. And ends up conceding two more. So that's four yeah, dead Eidolons, right? potential here. But you need really precise micro that Moon Hunter has really not showed us so far. So, I mean, I don't know if this is the strategy he should be using. Um, I would love to see an anvil. That could be really huge here. Mm. And I wonder if it's viable to just... Oh, man. That is unlucky. I wonder if it's viable to just spam nukes in the choke and make mm. him never leave. Can you afford that and still get ahead, I wonder? Well, it feels possible. The Ancial over here to provide detection, overwatch for top ramen. And I ain't talking about the shitty game. <laughs> oh, he's going to get a cleric. Probably. Mm. He's kind of spattering all of his uh, Eidolons at different locations. But yeah, he's slowly it's picking something. them apart. They're on hold position. Only now going to move the Ancial Ooh. forward. And they're not yeah, within yeah. range to actually attack. Uh, okay, ends oh, up surviving. Nice micro that time. So you can see, they can get work done. If he's got time to control precisely. Now he's moving in with the Mavericks. Yeah. Man, if he got a good arc, I feel like he could actually do this, especially with some power siphon. But uh, yeah. he's not if the micro is coming in in a big blob, he is going to get absolutely splattered. Yeah, that's right. I think it's easy to say that Ooh. now. On to the gas. Or if he had one Trojan with eight Harakens in it, or what was it four Harakens now? Did you change the size? I don't remember. Uh, no, there is still... They don't... Yeah, take but one much Trojan space. with eight Harakens in it, he could drop below that or move in and destroy everything. Ooh, the Ancial goes down. That's, that's a, a big hit. hit. Yeah. Oh my God. You gotta that watch out. So don't, can't, can't be so close to that anchor. Okay, now here comes the move forward, and the Mavericks are not gonna stim. Oh, Phalanx shots too, creeping forward here. And again, if, that's, if this was eight Eidolons instead of you know hemorrhaging the first four, I think Moonhunter yeah, yeah. would be a lot better equipped. Even then, he kills the anchor, man. Like that was minimal targeting, minimal micro, and his Eidolon's still doing a lot of power there. So you can see the potential for the strat. It will be a Trojan with four Vultures taking a step out. But the Ancio... Like what are you doing? That's right, that's You're right. Like a Look, this is the great thing about bio. You get in a fight, you're like, oh, 10 of my Mavericks died in two seconds. Yeah, it was a pretty good fight for me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you just throw them in. That another Maverick dying. What was he even being shot at there? Yeah, that was a Maverick. Ah, oof. Ooh, that's not a Maverick. No, that is not a Maverick. Ay, ay, oh, ay. No. Oh, is he going to get it, though? Ooh. Well, it's on hold position. you got to be so careful there, because that's 100 gas. That's more gas than an idol on. Oh, he's rotating him. Shaman would be good. Yeah. Well, there is going to be a third base here. We do have a double fulcrum follow-up from Top Ramen, who still doesn't have his tier three. We need to keep watch on this uh, Trojan as it's heading to the, the natural base. We do have star ports because that atlas is finished for Moon Hunters. So the follow-up is going to be pretty interesting here. The one Maverick that killed that uh, Vulture earlier is now looking at four Vultures and saying, um, no, I ain't going to do that. And now here comes the sort of committal. It will start to slow down yeah. that ministry, but that's about it. I don't think he can kill it, yeah, and he's going to lose a lot if he doesn't uh, remove from this fight. That's getting an Ancial for his trouble, but yeah, you don't want to lose all the Mavericks. Especially and all the Eidolans Clerics, too. The yeah. The Eidolons in the back trying to do something. I don't think they actually got a balance there, though, unfortunately. No, they did not. Look at all these Mavericks Ooh. coming on down, and they're going to gun down these Goliaths. Never saw that. Yeah. 
Ooh, can he get the aid still? That would be huge, but it has a lot of energy. It does, energy. and look, it's Ooh. stepping too close to the sun with that one, and Goliath gonna well, be able to sight it. One. Yeah, so he's pushed back. But hey, we know already has a third base, and he did cost a few units there of his opponent to get that, so he's still doing pretty well here. And again, this is showing the strength of Bio. Oh my god. Oh my god, here we go, the Wyverns. This is what I wanted to see, but why do you have to build it down here? It's look everything. I know, yeah, uh, all the Mavericks just kind of idling around. We don't have any more Eidolons coming, no more Savants either. Well, so this is gas for Wyverns, right? Yeah. Well, he's on three he bases definitely... with the gas caps on at least the natural, or sorry, the third, and now coming online for the main. Yeah. Ooh, another drop, though. Uh, you can definitely stop the mech from moving across the map with the Mavericks. Like, if, if the mech is moving forward and you still move forward into it, it's actually not a bad fight. It's only a problem when the opponent's set up in a good defensive position. And then the Mavericks are really going to struggle. Oh, and that ant seal's so, so low, but it doesn't end up uh, getting killed. Eidolon's trying to be safe. They will fall back. I, I still like Moon Hunter's comp overall. I do think that the Wyverns are going to need to hit some kind yeah, of critical mass, be. though. And he look. can't be in his natural. Bio needs to be out on the map and maintain positions. This is big, though. He's not even reacting. The Wyverns could definitely clean that up, but he's not even putting any units over there. He's lost so many workers. He had the worker advantage a moment ago. Do you want to show the Wyverns for that, though? Oh, no, he's sending back the entire Bio Force. This could be a critical error. Oh, I don't like this at all. If... Top Ramen moves in, which he is. He could take the game-winning position. He's not even going to catch all of them. The Trojans are going to fly right past. Uh-oh. Trojan did fall. Oh, Ansel goes down, thanks to the Eidolons. Yeah. But I think it's spotted the Wyverns, right? So this other Trojan here, not a... Uh... Good news. I know how to beat Top Ramen. Now I just need to make Eidolons. Shame I'm playing so. Because it counters right. his, his Ansel's, which uh, Top Ramen relies on a lot. Yes, that's right. He does often fly them a little too close, right? So that's another thing. Ooh, that was a nice little hit on the way back, though. Another shot. Why The Wyverns there's are not going to reveal themselves. Wyverns. But there's so many Goliaths. Yeah. Yeah, he needs to attack with the Goliaths simultaneously, but he's not. The Wyverns are taking so much damage. A drop coming in just randomly. Probably <laughs> too much. Well, actually, maybe he can barely take this, but he's going to have enough to clean up. I don't think so. No. Get the Goliaths are too strong, man. There's way too many of them as well. Man, so Dude, close, too, right? And he's got all these Mavericks that could have joined in that fight. Yeah. That would have definitely helped out a lot. It's a bit unfortunate because uh, Moon Hunter could have really stopped this force coming across quite well if he uh, kept his army on the map, but he got drawn back into his base with all his Mavericks and got in a choky location, didn't even combine the armed forces here, and got crushed for it. And, you know, Ramen, I have to say, he wasn't really prepared to deal with these Iron Ones, but you can't say he's been mismarking that much. He's doing his best out here. Gorman's coming up. Yeah, some Gorgons here, maybe slow down the against... Anseals. Finally, that one will go down. Yeah. Against uh, the lives, yeah, I'm sure the live ones will be a bit, uh, sorry, Gorgons will be uh, more cost efficient, but it's just not enough to... Yeah, GG gonna be GG. called. Gorgons may be more cost efficient, but it doesn't matter in this case. We have our 3-0 and o final player for Battlements. It's Top Ramen's Terran making it in over the guy who's been around for quite a while here, Moon Hunter, new kid on the block. Unfortunately, but we man, have to say goodbye to him, but hey, that's pretty good. I have to say that result is not a huge surprise, though. Not that Moon Hunter didn't play well. And really, I learned a lot from Moon Hunter's play when I get back to Terran. I'm going to be doing a lot of what he was doing. Mm. But uh, we knew Top Ramen was looking really strong mechanically from what we've seen already. So I am not surprised at that result, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah. Top Ramen, definitely the favorite, even though the seeding didn't tell you that story. But I will say that uh, taking a look at the way that Moon Hunter played, he's got some nice ideas. I think if he were up against a player who was less mechanically sound, or if he threw Top Ramen off with earlier successful harassment, like if that anchor had actually done something in the first game, or, you know, we saw him have a really good chance after off the back of his anchor play in the third game as well. I, I feel like if he had thrown Top Ramen off game, off Kelter early enough, then maybe he could have made up the difference that way. But as it stands, Top well, Ramen well. reigning supreme. Every early game, he did have a slight lead, right? So he has the ideas. And this is an unfortunate thing about StarCraft, actually. If you innovate the ideas yourself, it doesn't actually give you wins unless you can <laughs> execute better than your opponent as well. That's right. So then players who can execute better are going to come in and take your ideas and win with them. Like, Biddy B showed me that Seven Pool is the best opening of Zerg versus Zerg, right? So... The, it's kind of interesting that you learn from other people like that. Yep, yep, very interesting. And like you say, it doesn't necessarily matter if uh, the idea is yours because somebody will do it better than you ever could. Maybe that's the case for these Eidolons, or maybe Moon Hunter will come back stronger. As I'm mentioned before, try them, you know, I do think it's you worth... Wait, wait. Listen, it's worth noting, it's worth pointing out here. I think that the 
uh, when we go into the next round, uh, the next Acropolis, it's very likely we end up with six groups or more. So, you know, we'll see. We keep growing. We keep getting better players coming in that it's just not possible to fit, you know, only 12 really good players. I feel like we'd be leaving too many people out. So, you know, I think that's going to allow for some more interesting play coming in. Uh, definitely some more stack tournaments. So Moon Hunter will have maybe even a better shot going into the next one if he chooses to stick with the project. Nebline, thank you for casting all of these gauntlet qualifier matches with me. Do you have any closing words for us? Dude, if this is the gauntlet battle, this is going to be sick. That's right. Like, you know, I, I will admit, I can't pretend as of casting this, I have actually cast battlements. They were sick. Yes. They'll be uploaded. Go watch them. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Big fans of battlements here and big fans of the Throne Room series, which is currently ongoing as we speak. So... Check that stage out as well, and we'll be back with more Cosmonarchy content every damn day. GG.